Welcome to Faith Therapy. In this vlog, we're gonna talk about something that in today's society needs to be addressed, and that is father and daughter relationships. It's sad, but a lot of fathers do not have healthy relationships with their daughters, and a lot of daughters don't have a healthy relationship with their fathers. Does that make sense? Well, let me explain it to you. Let's get into this vlog. Let's go. So this is what I mean, ladies. There are fathers that are healthy and will try to connect with their daughters and be there for their daughters and have healthy relationships with them. However, the daughters are the ones that shut down and reject those type of relationships. Then on the other side, there's daughters that desire and long to have a healthy relationship with their fathers. But unfortunately, the father is unhealthy and cannot provide that healthy connection with his daughter. Now, why am I saying this? Because I've been on both Growing sides. Growing up, let me explain. We were not Christians. We did not have any Christian morals, Christian principles. All we had was tradition and religion. So we would go to Sunday church and I even did my communion, right? But here's what I mean. That my father was not taking the role that God ordained him to take as a father. One that was leading our family was my mother. And so because my mother was running our family, I got attached to her. I was able to draw to her because she was giving me a sense of direction. And my father was present in the physical, but mentally and emotionally, he was absent. And as the years progressed, he became a drug addict. So you can only imagine how much more he became absent. When the addiction took completely over his life, there was no father in the home. There was just a skeleton of a man. Can you relate to this? So around the age of 10, my dad got really, really lost in drugs. He became a drug addict to the extent that he would go missing for days from the house. We didn't know where he was at. We didn't know if he was dead or alive. We had no whereabouts of where he was. And it's around this time that a friend of mine invited me to church. On a big yellow school bus, this church had a children's ministry and they would pick up neighborhood children to go to church. Sure enough, I started going. And when I went, I fell in love with Jesus. And I remember the Sunday school teacher said, if you have anything that you want Jesus to do for you, let's take some time and pray. And I remember I went to some stairs in the side of the classroom I knelt down and I began to pray. And I prayed for my father. I said, Jesus, change my dad, change my family. Because we were broken. We were just, we, there was so much pain in our family that I wanted Jesus to step into our family and I believed it. Praise God. My mom started going to church. So now it was two of us praying for my dad. And a few time later, my dad started going to church. It was an American church. So my dad is Mexican. He didn't understand quite well. He said, I like what I feel, but I don't understand what they're saying. So we went, we in search of a Spanish church. We found a Spanish church. We felt the love of God. The love of God embraced us like the arms of Jesus himself in this church. And it was in this church that my dad was able to meet other brothers that encouraged him and loved on him. And he surrendered his life to God but yet the addiction was still following him. And that's when he got into the Victory Home. It's an outreach that helps men that have problems with alcohol and drug addiction. And when he went into this home, that is where God transformed his life completely. He was no longer addicted. He was no longer bound to sin, but he became the man of God that God had created him to be. God set him free, but God didn't just set him free. He restored our family. He restored his marriage. And guess what? He restored the relationship between me and my father. Now, remember I said that there's times where the daughter is the one that pushes back when the father wants to build a relationship. Well, I got to experience that because for years, I didn't know how to connect with my dad emotionally because there was no emotional ties since I was little. So when I became a preteen or a teenager, that's when he wanted to connect with me and I didn't know how to do it. But I remember praying and I remember seeking God. And because my dad was already a man of God at this time and he was taking the leadership of our home, he knew how to speak to me and he knew how to address me. 
And what happened was I couldn't see him emotionally like a father, like daddy's little girl. That was never established. But I began to see him like a leader. And that's when he began to impart into my life leadership principles. And he started giving me book reports to do around the age of 12. I would do book reports, Christian book reports. And so he kind of started to quote unquote, the way I like to say is he started to disciple me. So jokingly, I tell my dad, I'm your first disciple. Don't forget that. Because my dad's had the privilege of discipling many men throughout the ministry. But I always joke and I tell him, don't forget, I was your first disciple. So he would give me book reports. And at this time, he had his own construction business. So I would go work with him. And while we were working, whether it was doing carpet, plumbing, whatever it was, painting. I learned how to paint. I learned a lot of trades during this time that I got to spend with my dad. But I also learned his heart. I learned his childhood. I learned emotional parts of him that he was able to open up to me. And at the same time, I was able to connect with him like I had never connected. And it was in this season that God allowed me to put my guard down, to put anything that I was holding against him, to put it down slowly. And it was a season that till this day, I still remember. And I hold dear to my heart because I learned a lot from my dad not just in the physical trades of things, but I learned a lot emotionally of who he was, how he met my mom, the when he first came to America, when he was in high school, when he was trying to pursue my mom, things that happened in his childhood and how he felt, all of these things he was able to open up to me and share with me. So now, needless to say, I have an amazing relationship with my father. I love my father. My father's in his 60s, I'm in my 40s. And I remember he used to always say, Miha, one day you're gonna be 40 and I'm gonna be 60. Guess what? That time is here. The time is now. And God has healed our relationship. But it takes both people to surrender to God. He surrendered to God and he became the father that God called him to. And I surrendered the hurt and the resentment to God and I was able to receive from him. So with that said, I wanna bring you along because I have a special day planned for my dad. I don't do it often, but when I do it, I enjoy it. I am going to have a nice little dinner with my dad, me, my dad, and pretty much kid free. So come along. All right, ladies, so before I get to my destination, I came to a store real quick because I don't want to show up empty handed. I want to show up with a little card and a little gift card for him as well. It's not his birthday, not Father's Day, just a special day. Okay, they didn't have it where I went the first time, so here I am at Whole Foods. I should find what I'm looking for here. Again, gift cards and a card. We're gonna find out. Perfect, I have tons of cards. Get will cards, no, I'm looking more for a thank you. I think I found one, many thanks. Thank you. No, I think this one looks more manly. What did she say? Yeah, let's go with this one. Okay, and then we're gonna add a little gift card so that he can use whatever he desires right here perfect right here all right i got what i need let's go so we are going i let my dad pick where he wanted to go and my dad has been a fan of this restaurant it is called willie g seafood my dad loves it so here we are we're gonna enjoy some willie g seafood if you like seafood i recommend it if you don't don't worry about it
there he is. The man of the day. Hello, thank you. This is for you. Oh, thank you, Mika. Thank you. You sit next to Grandma. Oh, here now. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, like. You can put it You can put it in key crab bag. That would be my mom. You like that? It's a quarter of an inch. Sorry, man. <laughs> well, look at that. Enjoy. Nice, my dad's favorite. We got oysters, shrimp, crab leg, and mussels, I think it is. I'm not sure. Mm, some gumbo, some rice, cornbread. Oh, look at this. Yum. What is that, snapper? Yes. Nice. Seafood. Okay, we went to eat, and now we're here. We're gonna get us some ice cream. I'm gonna get my dad and my mom some ice cream. Took my dad to dinner, some little shopping, and now we're gonna have some sweets. Let's see what we get. Just enjoying a little time with my parents and my older son so it's a blessing anytime what the enemy meant for evil god has come and restored it a hundred times amen there's always hope in jesus Can I get some ice cream my dad right there <laughs> you know, nothing about vlogging no walk right past the phone and never turn to it <laughs> I want to go with the classic pistachio and bacon. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, since we're making it a day of it, we're going to come explore. We're going to see what we get into. Let's check it out. Look. Okay. This is the pole. I like to have boba, but I want first time. It is very, very cool. Mm -hmm. so cool. Okay. It's in Houston, first time. Never been here. It's called the Post Market, and they have a lot of variety of restaurants. Like a market. How nice is this? Okay, now I'm climbing stairs, y'all. The outdoor patio is so cool. Nah, sorry, I won't walk through it. <laughs> You're gonna walk through? Forty five when you drive. Hey, what's wet this? What's wet this gonna send you here? We took the stairs up, but now we are taking the elevator down. Yes, we are. We're gonna try this. Let me get into a light. Late night, good morning. They are cold pressed juices, raw and organic. Has coconut, watermelon, pineapple, lemon, cantaloupe, and electrolytes. Let's see. Oh, this is. Now you gotta come down. Don't walk, don't run. Ethan. Oh my 
my goodness. That looks cool. ladies so that was my day with my father i was able to spend a very special day just making him feel special focusing all my attention on him i took him to eat took him to do some shopping some ice cream and finally we went for an exploration in our city here in houston but as we did all that it was quality time but i want to finish off this vlog with this daughter and father relationships are very important and i know the need of a father and even if you have your father physically there may be a breach in that relationship where you just can't come together and a lot of times it's from pride from one or the other i know that a lot of fathers especially in the culture that i come from which is a mexican culture fathers are not raised to show emotions. Fathers are not raised to be tender or loving. For the daughters don't receive that tender, kind love from their father when they're little. So guess what? When they grow up, they don't expect that tender love. They don't expect that tender, loving affection from their father. And then this is where a lot of times young girls grow up and they're looking for this. They're looking for this love. They're looking for this tenderness. They're looking for this affection and they find it in the wrong places. And if you're watching this and you're a young lady and you're single, know this, that even though if you didn't have your needs met as a child through your father, know that you have a heavenly father who loves you and who sees you and who tenderly and affectionately shows his love in your life every day. And you may say, how if I don't know what it looks like in real life? In the word of God, God demonstrates his character. God demonstrates his tenderness and his affection in the way he talked to the woman in the well. In the way he talked to the woman that they were accusing of adultery. In the way that he talked to Mary and Martha in the way that Jesus talked to Mary Magdalene. If you look at the way Jesus related to women, it was always in a tender and affectionate, loving way. It was never in a harsh, judgmental, prideful, authority sense of way. He always made these women feel welcome and protected and loved. So know that your heavenly father loves you and he protects you. And I want you to also know that if you do have your father, honor him. Even if he's not saved, even if he wasn't a good father, honor him because that is the first promise in the Bible for you. It says, honor your father and your mother so that you can have a good life. It is not our job as daughters to judge or criticize our fathers. It is our job to honor them. Honor your father. And one way you can honor your father is by sowing into his life. Sow into his life at whatever level you can right now. Sow into him. And you will see how that kind of love towards him will break and soften hearts. And at the end of the day, he will know that he has a daughter that loves him and honors him. So from one daughter to another, I want to let you know that a relationship between you and your father can be healed and can be restored. It may take time, effort, and work, but with Jesus at the center of both of your lives, there's hope. And I'm telling you from firsthand experience, from a little girl who used to hide when her father would get home because he would get home drunk or high, I would hide because I didn't want to see him. I didn't want to see the arguing or the fighting that was about to take place. So I would hide. 
Now, fast forward, I'm a daughter that every time I see my father, no matter where I'm at, I always greet my father with a hug and a kiss on the cheek because that's my father. That's the father God gave me. And through the power of Jesus Christ, he has healed and restored what the enemy tried to rob many years ago. God has restored it. And now he is not just a father to me, but he is a blessing and a great grandfather to my four boys. When you trust God with your life, God does the impossible. I hope this vlog encouraged you. If you have your father and he's not saved, keep praying, keep believing, and keep giving a good testimony. And if you do have your father and he's saved, make sure that you let him know that you see him and that you honor him. God bless you. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Y'all have a great day.